Hi, I'm Dr. Reza Houston, and this is my introductory video to Finance 310, the introduction to investments for the fall semester of 2020. In this class, I'll be talking about how to manage and build portfolios. I'll be talking about how to predict returns, to analyze mutual funds, to identify appropriate options or futures products, and I'll also be talking a lot about the exchanges and how to buy and sell securities. Now, before I go into our syllabus and what I'm going to be expecting you to do, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. So right now, this is my third year at Ball State University. Prior to this, I worked for three years at Indiana State University as an assistant professor of finance. And prior to that, I earned my PhD from the University of Missouri. And before that, I worked as a property and casualty actuary and got my MBA. So let's talk about the course. So this course will be meeting Monday, Wednesday, and Friday during the fall semester. And I'll have office hours after our course from 12 to 3 p.m. on Mondays and Wednesdays and by appointment. And I want to be very, very emphatic about this. If you can't make my office hours, either you're forced to be off campus for whatever reason or you just have another class during that time, please go ahead and email me. I, I'm always willing to take phone calls, set up Zoom meetings. I don't want you to feel like you can't make my office hours if you have a question. Now, if you need to get in touch with me, you can do so via email or phone. Uh, this is my cell phone number. This is my email address. And this is obviously our Canvas page. My office is on the third floor of, w, uh, of Witten, Whittinger Hall. I'm just on the corner, room 359. Now, if you're taking this course, hopefully you've had Finance 300 already. What I'll be doing in this course is building off of what you've learned in Finance 300. Therefore, this first week of the course, I'm going to be asking you to review some of the formulas that you undoubtedly covered in Finance 300. Formulas like the basic return formula, the holding period return formula, the time value of money formula, etc., etc. That allows us to essentially build on what you covered in Finance 300 and go much further and much deeper into the field of investments. Now, our objectives for this course are to do well, many things. I'm going to cover in the early part of this course the capital markets, primarily the stock market. I'll also discuss portfolio selection and the relationship between risk and return. There's a very positive relationship between certain risks, certain risks and returns. And then I'll also discuss portfolio management and how we analyze portfolios. And then later in the course, we'll be discussing other security types. I'll discuss derivatives markets. I'll discuss mutual funds. We'll discuss possibly some other asset classes as well. Now, what will you need for this course? You'll really need three things. First, you're going to want to get a textbook. Right now, the listed course for this textbook is Fundamentals of Investing 13th Edition by Smart, Gitman, and Jank. However, I will say, feel free to get any version of this textbook you want. It doesn't have to be the 13th edition. It can be an earlier edition. It can be a used copy. It can be an international version. I will not ask you to get an access code for this course. I write my own questions, so just be prepared for that. I won't ask you to answer questions from the book. I, I, I think it's probably better. It'll save you a lot of money if you can find a friend that already has a copy of the textbook, or you can find something on Chegg or, oh, name a, a place where people buy textbooks outside of the, uh, the, the bookstore. All right, next. I'll ask you to get a StockTrack subscription from StockTrack.com. Now, the reason I say that is we're going to be managing a portfolio throughout this course, really for the first 14 weeks of the class, and I'm going to be asking you to compete with your classmates and the market as a whole throughout this class to, and see if you can outperform them and the market. This is our, our course 
site or course login for StockTrack. It's just BSU Fin 310 Fall 2020. So let me show you what StockTrack looks like. So this is my professor dashboard. StockTrack is going to act a lot like a brokerage account or a brokerage platform. It's going to allow you to buy and sell securities. It'll keep track of your portfolio at any given point in time. You can look at your closed position, so securities you've sold. You can compare yourself to your classmates via or by total returns, sharp ratio, alpha, beta. It really is a very useful tool. Up here at the top, you'll be able to see your total portfolio value. You'll start with a million dollars in fake cash or paper currency, and then your return percentage on your total portfolio will be right here. And then you'll be able to buy and sell securities like stocks, cryptocurrency, ETFs, options, mutual funds, futures, futures options, bonds, and foreign exchange, or FX foreign currency. All right, so that's the second thing you need. The third thing you need is a BA2 calculator or something very similar to that. I will allow you to use a calculator on the exams and having a BA2 is really the best you can get. It looks kind of like this. This is the professional version of the BA2 calculator, but it's, I mean, it looks very similar to that. It has the N... I divided by Y, P, V, and PMT and FV function keys on running around the middle here. I, I strongly recommend this calculator primarily because, well, it's, it's the calculator used on the CFA exams, the actuarial exams, and, I mean, hopefully you've already gotten some use out of it in Finance 310. There are a couple of other resources that you'll need. The first one is going to be Microsoft Excel. I'll work a lot of problems in Excel. Later, really in the middle of the course, I'll be optimizing portfolios in Excel. We'll be running regressions in Excel. Basically, make sure you have a copy of Excel or something close enough that you can use every function that I show you. I'll also make all of my lecture ve videos available through YouTube. You'll see that when you start watching our videos. I'll keep a playlist called Introduction to Investments, and in that playlist, in addition to our, our required lectures, I'll post videos from very famous individuals in the investment space, people like Warren Buffett or Burton Malkiel or Lars Peter Hansen or Gene Fama to give you some additional material beyond what is required in this course. So occasionally I'll find a really good video where Warren Buffett Warren Buffett talks about value investing, and that's very important for us as we go through and start to talk about valuation. Another good resource for you, a couple of semesters ago, I had a student mention that he was using Quizlet, and I decided to take it upon myself to build out a Quizlet for our course, just so you can learn the definitions, hopefully a little more easily. So that Quizlet Location is Finance 310, Ball State, Houston, and that contains, I believe, most of the definitions you're going to need for this course. So feel free to use it. Just know that most of the questions I'll be asking on exams or in the assignments that I'll be giving you will not be definitional. Really, this is an additional resource, but, but I won't be drawing questions from Quizlet. Uh, next... I'd recommend that you get a copy of either the Financial Times or the Wall Street Journal. My recommendation to you is the Financial Times. It's the paper that I read every morning when I wake up, and I'll be showing you a lot of articles from the Financial Times in this course. The big breakdown or the big difference between these two is that the Financial Times covers more international topics. It's a British publication based out of London, whereas the Wall Street Journal obviously covers more U.S. stories. I mean, it's it's the premier journal or business publication for the United States. It just doesn't have as much co good coverage internationally. Next, Canvas. So everything that you'll need will be on Canvas. All of our lecture videos, my slides, any discussions that we have, any exams uh, will be taken through Canvas, and then I'll, I'll be keeping you track keeping track of your grades in Canvas. 
Your lecture materials will be found under the Modules tab in Canvas. And so if I go to our Canvas site, you'll be able to see just about everything. We'll have our assignments over here on the left-hand side, and any quizzes, any exams you take will be under the Quizzes tab. Our Modules tab is where you're going to get all of our weekly information. So the, the videos will be under each week, and then the PowerPoint slides will also be there along with any Excel tabs or any additional resources. So for example, in week one, I'll be talking about prospectuses. So I thought it'd be a good idea to give you a couple example prospectuses or IPSs. All right, let's talk about class policies and procedures. Obviously, if there's some major religious holiday, please just let me know. I'm obviously willing to work with you on that. Class format and decorum, this is a big one. This is the first semester that I've employed a flipped classroom. So if you're unfamiliar with what a flipped classroom is, essentially that's a classroom or a course where the lectures are provided outside of class via lecture videos. The analysis, the homeworks, the assignments, really the, the review stuff, all of that will be given in person. So essentially it's the exact opposite of, well, most classes you've probably taken up to this point. So every week you'll have a series of videos to watch. I'll give you the PowerPoints and the Excel spreadsheets that I worked in for those videos. And you'll have a series of problems to complete based on that lecture material. In class or via Zoom, if something changes, I'll, I'll cover the problem set, I'll show you maybe some advanced material, I'll discuss your portfolio and security analysis projects, and then I'll, I'll make sure that you're ready for the exams. So I strongly recommend that you attend class or contact me via Zoom if you're unable to attend class. Cell phones, obviously, please put your cell phones on silent during class. I mean, we're all adults. We all have stuff going on. If you need to take a call during class, just go ahead and step out. I'm not going to be offended. Just uh, don't take a call right in front of me and disrupt the class. I, I don't really like that. Actually, I've never had that happen before. Oh, well. So next, big question, how will we handle COVID-19? So this semester, we have to be extremely flexible. I mean, there's I can't have an attendance requirement. I can't give you points for showing up in class. Uh, I also have been asked by the College of Business to have a seating chart so that we can effectively identify if one student in the class tests positive. We know everyone who's, who is sitting around them. And because of the social distancing requirement. Our classroom, which would normally hold 36 students, now only holds 20. Now, we're meeting Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and so I thought it would be a good idea to actually reduce that down to about 13 to 15 so that you are responsible for coming to class one day out of the week, Monday, Wednesday, or Friday. And the benefit there is that we're getting pretty close to having almost one Bloomberg terminal for every student, which is an incredibly, incredibly important thing. I've never been able to have that option before, which would make this class so much more interesting because it means every student has access to the best tool that investment professionals have while you're sitting out there in the classroom. Uh, so I'll talk about the Bloomberg terminals many times throughout this class, but essentially they are a the, the end-all, be-all data repository for anything that an investment professional would want. If you want stock returns, they're there. If you want analysis or research reports, they're there. If you want to learn about some cryptocurrency, it's there. If you want to reach out and message, I don't know, Jamie Dimon, you probably can find him in the Bloomberg chat function. So what I'm trying to get at is being able to use these Bloomberg terminals is incredibly, incredibly important. And because we're forced to have no more than 
one about one third of our students in class each day, I, I'm going to try and make use of that. Uh, so what I'd like you to do, and I'll mention this at the end of the video, but I'd like to give you guys the option of what day you'd like to come and where you would like to sit. And the way I thought I would do this is I'll open up the process at noon on Saturday, August 22nd. So from noon to midnight on Saturday, August 22nd, I'd like you to email me and tell me what day, Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, you would like to attend class. And I'll have a seating chart up on our modules tab, probably near the top where it's a where it says somewhere something like closed captioning. I'll have our syllabus and the seating chart up here. And what I'll ask you to do is identify the the seat number that you'd like and the day that you'd like to attend. I'll give you 12 hours to email me, and if I don't hear from you, uh, well, it, it'll be first come, first serve. Uh, so if someone emails me and wants the seat and time that you do ahead of you, I'll give it to them. But if I don't hear from you, I'll randomly assign you to the remaining seats and days. All right, so that's that. If you do have any symptoms of COVID-19 or there's some medical condition, if you have an immunodeficiency disorder, please just let me know. Obviously, my goal is to keep everyone safe, safe this semester. I'll be wearing a mask at all times in the classroom. I will ask you guys to do the same. I believe Ball State has a requirement that if you're in campus buildings, you are required to wear a mask. Uh, so please bring a mask to class and socially distance. And if the university announces a shutdown, uh, we will hold classes via Zoom. I'll answer questions via Zoom. We'll, we'll basically move everything completely online. So I guess I just said, the stuff about the face masks. I will be wearing a face mask. I believe everyone is required to be wearing a face mask while they're in the classroom. Students with disabilities, please just let me know if that hurts your ability to be in the class or uh, attend class or something like that. Diversity, pretty straightforward. I don't want to do anything to discriminate against anyone. So, you know, I'll be trying to avoid doing that. <laughs> uh, university objectives, go ahead and read those on your own if you would like. All right, let's talk about attendance and participation. I've already told you that I, I can't directly award you points for showing up. However, I want to make it well worth your while to show up and participate in our class. We will have very small class sizes. I mean, really between 10 to 15 students in any one day at most. And because of that, I can really have a lot more detailed conversation with you about really anything. I mean, I'll, I'll come prepared to answer every single question on our assignments that you'll be responsible for the week and uh, for during the week. And I mean, theoretically, we could probably answer every question in those assignments in the class that you attend. So come prepared. And my goal is that by the time you leave, your assignment is done and those were easy points. Uh, so you'll be taking your, your assignments or submitting your assignments via the assignments tab on our Canvas page. I'll also try to give you some, some additional extra knowledge that, that is not given in the lecture videos. So speaking of assignments, generally we'll have one assignment every week up until the second to last week, and those assignments will cover anything I mention in the lecture. I'll be asking you to calculate various numbers, optimize a portfolio, I might ask you to collect some data from any of the data resources we talk about in class, whether that's Morningstar or Bloomberg or Yahoo Finance or FinViz or the Edgar Data System, for, which is the SEC repository. So that's that. I won't ask you to, or I won't give you any homework assignment that requires you to pull data only from Bloomberg. Every question that you'll have on these assignments you will be able to 
collect any outside data from some online resource as well as Bloomberg. Usually it's just easier to collect that data from Bloomberg though. Uh, you are free to use our lab during business hours if there's not a class in there. And I'll post the hours for our, our classroom where the, the room is free at some point early in the semester. All right, the next thing you're going to be responsible for is the stock track assignment, the portfolio management project. In that assignment, I'm going to ask you to manage a portfolio of a million dollars. It's a paper trading account. So the first thing you need to do really by week one is to join our class group in stock track. Remember, this is our course ID, BSU FIN 310 Fall 2020. This stock track uh, login will cost about $30 and you'll have access for about 14 weeks. If you'd like to continue with stock track, it's actually free, but you don't get to join up with a class. So what you're going to do is you're going to build a portfolio based on some object, some investment objectives that you'll set. I'm going to give you the option to manage a, a mutual fund, and that'll come with some requirements, or a hedge fund, and those will come with some requirements which are way less constricting. So I'm going to grade you based on, first, your commitment to your investment strategy, then your ability to calculate all the statistics and output all of the data that I ask for, and then finally, your performance in the project. So did you outperform your classmates, and did you outperform the market? I'll discuss this later on in the class. The next assignment we're going to have is a security analysis assignment, or in this case, it's just a stock analysis. I'm going to ask you to pick one security or one stock that is well known and has plenty of data associated with it or its, its underlying firm, and I'm going to ask you to analyze that security and determine whether or not it's undervalued or whether it's overvalued or whether it's appropriately valued. Uh, this will be where we start to talk about the intrinsic value and the market value of a security. I'm going to ask you to write a research report on your security and detail your analysis and explain why you believe this security is undervalued or overvalued. Again, this will be one of those things that I provide you more information for later in the course, but I will give you a rough draft deadline. So if you want to send me your rough draft about a week before the final draft, I'll give you feedback, recommend things that you should change, and then hopefully by the final draft, you've gotten all of those things changed and you get a very good grade on the assignment. All right, next we will have three exams. Those exams will cover everything that we talk about in the lectures. Those exams will cover about four, maybe five chapters at most, and they'll be given via the Respondus Lockdown browser, which I'll give you instructions for downloading if you don't already have it later in this course. Uh, on those exams, I will ask you questions that are very similar to the ones you'll see in the assignments, and we'll always have a review session and plenty of old exams and a practice exam to study from. Now, I will ask you to complete a, a lockdown browser test early in the semester. I believe the second week is when you're going to take that, and that's just to make sure that your equipment is working and you know how to take the, the exam, how to set up your webcam on your computer, and so and so. So during that exam, you will be able to use a calculator, although no cell phones. So that's that. So here's a breakdown of our points during the semester. Our three exams are going to account for about 37.5% of the course grade. Our security analysis project and our portfolio management project, each about 12.5%. The weekly assignments will account for about a third of the grade in the, grade in the class. And like I said, if you're showing up to class and asking questions, those should really be easy points. I mean, really just an automatic A. And then finally, the Respondus Lockdown Browser Test, I'll give you 20 points for taking that. And then down here is our tentative schedule of activities. Obviously, with COVID, this might be subject to change, but this is more or less what we're going to follow. This is 
really what you're responsible for every week. So week one runs from the 24th of August to the 30th. We'll cover chapter one, and you should complete these materials. So watch the rest of this video. I'll have a formula sheet for you to review, and that'll cover just about every important formula that you should remember from Finance 300. And then finally, I'll ask you to watch the Chapter 1 lecture videos. And at the end of the week, you need to complete the Chapter 1 assignment. So feel free to ask, the, ask me about any questions you have with, with, with respect to the problems uh, in that assignment while we're in class. So generally, there's we're covering a chapter a week, except for chapter five, which will take two weeks. Uh, that's because chapter five is really the heart of the course. That's where we're going to learn how to optimize a portfolio. And then we'll learn about the cap capital asset pricing model and how to predict stock returns. So be prepared for a lot of material during those weeks. In addition to our weekly assignments, over here on the extreme right hand in the right hand column, I, I do have some other material that you're going to be responsible for. So for example, you need to be registered for stock track by September 6th. I, I strongly recommend getting that set up well beforehand. I will make it so that there is a penalty for not registering for stock track that increases the longer you wait to, to register for stock track. Uh, in week three, I guess, that's when you'll need to complete the lockdown browser test. And then week six is when you're going to take the first exam. And like I said, that'll cover the first four chapters and you'll have a week to take it uh, outside of class. Later on, we have some other stuff here. So for your portfolio, I'll ask you to identify your portfolio holdings and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, basically, it's a simple download function. I'll just ask you to keep track of that and report that to me, and then that'll make it easier to put together your final portfolio at the very end. So that's that. And I suppose I don't have anything more to give you. So before our class starts, this Saturday, August 22nd, I would like you to take a look at our seating chart and identify the seat that you would like and the day, Monday, Wednesday, or Friday during the week, when you would like to attend. So if you select Monday, you're coming for all 15 Mondays or 14 Mondays until Thanksgiving. If you select uh, Wednesday, same thing, Friday, same thing. Uh, it's first come, first serve. If your first day and time didn't work out, I'll let you know via email. I'll try to respond to you as quickly as I can so you can select another seat that you would like or day that you would like, and we'll go from there. So with that, I'll end here, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you very much.